As you probably by now appreciate, the Autogas 4 Emissions Analyzer is not only an essential MOT tool, it's also an invaluable aid to diagnosing engine running problems. With this in mind, we've produced this short tape to help you get the best possible results from your Autogas 4. The tape, which is in two main sections, highlights these areas. Hints on use and maintenance, and in section two, we follow up with how to interpret your exhaust emission readings. There's also some news about two brand new additions to the system VLC range. We start by clarifying three basic areas. These are HC hang-up, low flow, and maintenance. HC hang-up. It's important to understand that it's for reasons of accuracy and reliability that every OIML class one gas analyzer must be capable of purging itself of excessive hydrocarbon residues. However, if the probe, hoses or filters are contaminated with hydrocarbons, that's partially burnt fuel, the gas bench will attempt to clear itself, but will be unable to due to the contamination. The risk of this happening can be minimized by paying attention to the following points. At the end of the day, remove the sampling hose from the gas bench and thoroughly purge it of any HC residue by blowing it out with compressed air. However, always take care when working with compressed air and never point an airline at yourself or anyone else. When possible, it's a good idea to store the pipe on wall brackets to enable it to drain. Occasionally, in a badly ventilated workshop, it's possible for the concentration of exhaust emissions to be so high that this will also trigger the HC hang-up. This is a potentially lethal situation, as exhaust gases, particularly carbon monoxide, are highly poisonous and do kill. So for your own health and safety, only run engines in well-ventilated areas. Before inserting the probe into the exhaust, make sure the engine is at normal operating temperature and increase the revs to 2,500 for a couple of minutes to clear the excess condensation. Finally, ensure the engine is idling at its recommended speed. This complete procedure ensures, firstly, that valid readings are recorded and, secondly, that large amounts of water are not drawn into the gas bench. In fact, it's a vehicle inspectorate requirement for MOT testing that the engine must be at the correct operating temperature and idling correctly. For this reason, and to avoid guesswork, a coolant temperature and RPM sensor kit is now available to fit your Autogas 4. Connection to the Autogas 4 is made by a simple harness, and likewise the connections to the vehicle are equally straightforward. RPM measurements are sensed via the inductive clamp on the HT lead and the temperature sensor is strapped securely to the top radiator hose. Once these are in place, the engine RPM and temperature readings can be called up on the Autoscan handset. You also have the option of printing out this information for a total record of the vehicle test. Three further points to remember concerning HC hang-up are if the vehicle being tested has a high HC reading, for example, above 1,500 parts per million, remove the probe immediately the value has been recorded, thereby avoiding heavy contamination of the system. And as the filter elements will inevitably absorb HC, have a couple of spares to interchange regularly, allowing the reserve filters to breathe and dry out while not in use. This is probably best done first thing in the morning before starting any tests. Of course, once the filter becomes very dirty, it should be thrown away. And never operate the unit without a filter element, as this causes serious and costly damage to your gas analyzer. Always remove the probe from the exhaust before switching off the engine, and don't leave the probe lying on the floor where it can draw in low-lying exhaust gases as this will also increase the risk of HC contamination. Low flow. Low flow will be displayed when the gas bench can't draw sufficient exhaust gases to make an accurate analysis. 
Often this can be attributable to a blocked filter element, pipe or probe. A regular wipe of the probe is advised to avoid exhaust deposits building up in the holes. Once removed from the gas bench, the pipe can be checked for blockages by blowing it through with compressed air. The polythene discharge pipes at the rear of the bench must also be kept clean and kink-free to enable an adequate airflow through the unit. Maintenance. Many of the points regarding maintenance have already been covered, but there are one or two others to be aware of. In addition to the paper element, there are these two gauze-type filters which are located within the filter housing. These should be removed regularly and washed in a weak solution of water and detergent. Before replacing them, smear a small drop of washing up liquid on the fine gauze. This helps to keep the inside of the unit free of exhaust residue. By the way, as these gauzes are of different sizes, they are not interchangeable. And do take care when refitting them not to over tighten the retaining caps. Finger tight is sufficient. And please remember, never use solvents of any kind to clean any Autogas 4 component. From time to time, remove the cartridge from the bottom of the handset and make sure the edge connector is clean and dry. If necessary, wipe it clean with a soft cloth. The carbon filter, which is at the rear of the unit, will also require occasional renewal if it becomes heavily contaminated. Often this can be recognized by a value of up to nine parts per million being recorded without the sampling hose connected to the filter housing. However, this is assuming that the previously mentioned points concerning HC hang-up, for example contaminated filter elements and so on, have already been checked. This one-way valve, fitted in the gas bench's water exhaust hose, should also be periodically cleaned with a solution of water and detergent. But do make sure that the valve is refitted the correct way round by checking that the air is venting from both discharge pipes when the pump is running. The probe and sampling hose should also be periodically washed out with a mild solution of detergent and water. An old washing up liquid bottle is ideal for this purpose. Don't forget to then thoroughly dry out the hose with compressed air. If the unit is operated in a poorly ventilated workshop, fit a plastic extension tube to the carbon filter and position it where it can draw in clean air. During freezing weather conditions, you may wish to leave the unit switched on overnight, thereby reducing the possibility of any condensation freezing within the unit. And to improve warm-up time in cold, damp conditions, disconnect the sampling hose from the rear of the bench until it's ready for use. This improves the airflow through the unit. So, to summarize, check all filters regularly. Never operate the gas bench without filters. Don't put the probe into the exhaust until the engine is thoroughly warm. Don't leave the probe on the floor or anywhere it might draw in moisture. Don't stand the gas bench on the floor as this would affect the zero calibration. Blow out the sampling hose and probe daily. And most important, always ensure there is good ventilation. One last point, for your convenience, many of these recommendations have been summarized in these two quick reference cards. Exhaust emissions. As you are probably aware, exhaust emission testing has been brought into force to help reduce the amount of pollution entering the atmosphere. In actual fact, pollutants only make up about 1% of the exhaust emissions, but it is this small percentage about which we are most concerned. They include carbon monoxide, which is highly poisonous and can be a serious health hazard in both dense traffic and semi-enclosed areas, NOx, which includes several different oxides of nitrogen and is known to contribute to acid rain. 
and hydrocarbons, which are tiny particles of partially burnt fuel. These, together with NOx, react in sunlight to produce ozone and contribute to chemical smog, which is capable of causing serious damage to eyes and lungs. Carbon dioxide is a byproduct of complete combustion, and although not regarded primarily as a pollutant, it does contribute to the greenhouse effect and global warming. At the moment, and for the foreseeable future, there isn't a requirement to measure NOx. So Autogas 4 measures CO, HC, CO2, and because it's useful for diagnosing running problems on catalyst-equipped engines, oxygen. CO, CO2 and O2 are all measured as a percentage and HC is recorded in parts per million. So how does this all help you? Well, a full gas analyzer is much more than an essential tuning aid. It can also provide important information when diagnosing engine running problems. But to begin with, what emission values are considered to be normal? Typical values for a reasonably new, correctly running, non-catalyst engine are likely to be around 1 to 3 percent CO, 200 to 300 parts per million HC for a carburetor engine, and 120 to 200 parts per million for a fuel injected engine, 12 to 14 percent CO2, and 0.3 to 1 percent O2. For vehicles fitted with a catalytic converter and with emissions measured at the tailpipe, values are likely to be around 0 to 0.5% CO, 0 to 50 parts per million HC, 14 to 16% CO2, and 1.5 to 2% oxygen. If the exhaust emissions are not within these limits, they can be used to aid fault diagnosis. For example, CO and HC rise as the mixture is enriched. So high CO and HC values, accompanied by low CO2 and O2, would probably indicate an incorrectly adjusted mixture. These results could also point to a low inlet manifold vacuum, caused by excessive carbon buildup on the back of the valves. HC emissions are also sensitive to the slightest misfire and are therefore useful when compared with CO values. For example, an engine that records nearly normal CO figures and is accompanied by high emissions of hydrocarbons and by slightly lower CO2 levels almost certainly has a misfire. A low CO figure and high HC value accompanied by low carbon dioxide and high oxygen levels would indicate a lean mixture, probably caused by an incorrect adjustment. CO2 levels provide a good indication of combustion efficiency as they are a byproduct of complete combustion. Consequently, high levels of CO2 indicate good burning of the mixture. This can also be used to diagnose a misfire if a cylinder misfires, it won't burn all the fuel, and significantly less carbon dioxide will be produced. Oxygen levels are also affected by misfires. As the oxygen is expelled from the cylinder virtually untouched, resulting in increased O2 levels. In addition, oxygen levels are valuable for detecting problems on catalyst-equipped cars, which produce CO and HC levels so low but they're no longer useful as a diagnostic aid. A lean running engine can be detected by a significant rise in O2 levels, as there is insufficient fuel to use all the oxygen during combustion. By the way, a leak in the exhaust system could also produce similar results. A final example of fault diagnosis very often caused by crankcase fumes would be indicated by an increase in CO and a reduction in CO2. This can quickly be proved by removing the breather hose and noting whether the emissions return to normal. 
You may find this graph helpful in appreciating what happens to the various emissions as the air-fuel mixture varies. When the air-fuel ratio is at the stoichiometric, or lambda 1, CO, HC and oxygen are all low and the CO2 level is high. Enriching the mixture will produce increases in CO and HC while CO2 is reduced. Leaning the air-fuel ratio, on the other hand, increases HC and oxygen and reduces CO2. Obviously, the interpretation and use of exhaust emissions to identify possible problem areas will take you a little while to get used to. But given time, it should become second nature. Having determined that there is a fault, for example with the engine's fuel system, you then have to diagnose which component is defective. This becomes increasingly difficult as fuel management systems become more complicated. However, VL Churchill have developed a new product to help you cope. As you're no doubt aware, one of Autogas 4's advantages is that its auto-scan handset is designed to be integrated with the complete range of system VLC test equipment. Auto Multi is the latest addition to this expanding range of affordable diagnostic equipment. Fitted between the handset and the vehicle, it allows you to check numerous components of engine management systems. Designed to be flexible in its use, it can perform active testing of component functions and in most cases dynamic operation of the component while it is still fitted to the vehicle. It's capable of operating and checking idle speed control valves of Ford, GM, Honda, Audi, VW and BMW. Stepper motor idle air control valves as fitted to GM, to Rover and Jaguar and so on electronic injectors, oxygen sensors, MAP sensors, and mechanical relays. Furthermore, it can be used as a signal generator for applications such as the testing of electronic speedometers and certain types of ignition systems. In fact, it's capable of carrying out most of the active and dynamic checks required on many petrol-injected management systems. We're sure you will agree with us that Automulti is going to be an essential piece of equipment for everybody who needs to keep pace with the increasing complexity of motor vehicles and the accompanying business opportunities. So we hope you found this short tape both interesting and helpful and also realize that it's all part of VL Churchill's ongoing commitment to customer satisfaction. By the way, a tailored dust cover is now available to protect your Autogas 4. And finally, if you require replacement filters, etc., for your Autogas 4, or further details about either the new temperature and RPM kit, or the System VLC Auto Multi, please contact us direct.